Karen, so it's in the sea. Zoom in a little bit on the Karen. There he is, random. There's a day. The uh, 100 to 400 plus two times converter. Got his mouth open. That's hilarious with the waves crashing on him. Windy hair, look. You've got less hair than me, Nick. So, this is Nick. He's got the 200 to 600. The, basically, Nick had a similar problem to me about the autofocus problems early on. So, he sold. Do you sell it or send it back? He sold his A7R4 um, and then bought the A9. Bought the A9. Yeah. Bought the A9, but then missed the high resolution of the R4. So, he's now gone back to a new R4, but the autofocus problem seems to have just disappeared. So it always made me wonder if it was actually the camera or the lens. So Nick's got his, can I swap lenses now? Nick's um, got his 200 to 600 with him. Um, and we're gonna try on his camera, see if I can see any difference. And then we're gonna stick it on mine and see if it focuses properly. If it doesn't, I know I've got a problem. So, and then it's obviously proof that it's actually the camera and not the lens. So here we go, we're gonna go and play. You just find it easier. Yeah, so we've got the or Nick's 200 to 600 on now. We're shooting zone and uh, ISO 4, uh, sorry, ISO 640. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go to one two thousandth of a second and uh, see if we can hit anything. This is where we don't get many birds for life. <laughs> It's where we have birds squawking, but nothing flying. Right. <laughs> Typical. But we'll get something in a minute. Come on. The heron would be cool, wouldn't it? But the problem is they're all over there at the minute. They want to be a bit closer because you can't really get a gauge on... Even though we've got the resolution, you still end up with a small picture. Oh, yeah. That was a duck. Where is he? That's all right. Yeah, but I don't want to waste. At the end of that, if it's getting a sharp shot, which it is, well, actually a little bit faster shot speed needed, possibly. Yeah, I go about two and a half. Yeah. This big wet stuff falling out of the sky. Are they coming this way, those birds? Oh, we've got an air display coming. That's oh, geese. I think we might get in the car in a second. <laughs> this is snow. This is snow in what is April, isn't it? So I've now got my camera on Nick's 200 to 600. One thing I have noticed straight away was my shutter sounds a lot more clunky than his does. I don't know if you can hear that. Well, you will be able if you take a shot. Yeah, listen to mine, guys. Actually, it does sound similar. Hmm, does sound a bit more clunky, doesn't it? I don't know if it's, I don't know. Not sure. Anyway, we're gonna take a couple of uh, shots. I've got some sharp shots on Nick's, so it's gonna be very interesting. I'm at the same, same thing. Turn my eyes up so I can actually see. <laughs> there we go. Just need a bird. One thing that is nice about this lens is the internal zoom because you can literally just do that with a fingertip. Yeah. But especially when it's on a gimbal, yeah. The but with that, I'm generally at 800 anyway, or or 400, whatever. So it's not really an issue. Um, just need a bird now, please. Come on. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, on with the two times on. So I think it's got the two times on as well. So 800, Eight, that extra 200 millimeters I love. Absolutely love. You do have to shoot a higher ISO, but that's not really an issue when you've got things like Topaz. All right, here's the moment of truth, guys, the first shots. And guess what? It's sharp as you like. <laughs> Where's that cormorant? Uh, not the cormorant, the uh, eager. He's down there still, he was there a minute ago. 
Um, we just need that opportunity to get the shot. Ready? Yeah, there's a bit of bunting there. Where is he? Oh, missed. He's just come into the horse one. Couple of uh, cormorants, if I can find them. Oh, bunting. That was a wagtail. Can't find him. Ah, missed. Him. <laughs> so let's have a look while I'm in, while I'm videoing still. How are we doing? Um, they're not too bad to be fair. Let's go for the back one. Yeah, sharp. Okay. It is sharp, yeah. Well, the um, obviously, here we go, moving target, a bit like we had a minute ago. Couldn't get on him. Couldn't find him, as be honest. You know, when you're looking straight at him, you kind of, it was so, it was too, it was close here somewhere, so the, the uh, distance of focus was quite huge. Sharp. Yeah, very happy. But I'll tell you what, don't miss the weight. <laughs> At all. The weight, I'll tell you what, losing that is got to be a kilo lighter. It feels a kilo lighter. As you go. You all right? Yeah. That's but the extra reach is quite nice, isn't it? That's Surprising. Yeah. It's not bad. It's, it's not great light, is it? Especially for that F11. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It does. It's, I'm impressed with it. Yeah, I got a shot oh, actually a little while ago of um, the tracking through here. I don't think it was a. I think it was a. Oh, it was, the, it was the geese actually. They came down like that and they went behind it and came back up, and it still stayed on them right through. Yeah, it's great. Uh, people will say either hey, two times is soft. It, it slows your auto focus down. No. Down on here. No. It's, it's just like it was on there. Yeah. It doesn't seem to make any difference at all. I think if you go from close to far, so if you focus something here. Yeah. Yeah, you might have. I find it better on mode two for when you're panning. It's actually but it gets really twitchy. Yeah. Um, but I think if you're focused close and then you've got to focus far, it sometimes doesn't like it because it's got a long way to try and work out. Um, right guys here is a sequence of all the shots I've taken and this is basically what you see as a full image everything else is cropped in to give you a better view um, all of the shots had auto levels applied to them because it was really quite dull um, so it kind of gives you a, an average uh, level so you might see a little bit of noise here or there but that's just because it's all gone up a bit uh, compared to how it was taken but it's not about image quality it's more about how it focused and I'm actually really impressed as you can see here, just flicking through, um, it did very well. I mean, I'm talking when I had the 200, 600 on my A7R4 before the reinitialization, um, it, it just wouldn't hold focus on these at all. You're talking really soft shots, um, it, almost like it's 10% out of focus all of the time. And a lot of other people out there having a very similar experience. Nick had the same experience. He was like, what the hell's going on? Um, but as you can see, you know, it's it's doing really well uh, you know as much as I could think and we remember we were in a really dull crappy day it was snowing um, and in fact it actually tried to lock onto the snow a couple of times and that's why a couple of the shots are out of focus um, but like heavily cropped in not necessarily perfect some of these but it did really well I'm thinking possibly a 90% hit rate is what I'm thinking um, or thereabouts we didn't miss many and if, if I did it's more the fact that something came in focus like the reeds here but it's actually gone behind the reeds there you know so there's a lot of things come into play we were, I was shooting zone AFC pretty much uh, um, as you can see here this is nice and sharp but as you can see the lights rubbish the sky's just ble bleached out white uh, you know like I say a couple of shots aren't brilliant but then you know if every single shot's perfect <laughs> what's the challenge you know um, hey but yeah 
the comparison of what it was like when I had my lens before it went away, uh, went back, is night and day. It's absolutely different, completely different. Um, when I was using Nick's camera and then onto mine, um, you can see and feel there was no difference in the focusing speeds or anything like that. So I now know that the camera is very similar. Obviously, we heard the shutter difference, but I think that's just wear and tear on my shutter. I've done a hundred thousand shots, just about, uh, where he's only done four thousand. So I don't think that's an issue at all. But yeah, worst case scenario, day chucking down with snow every now and again, dark, moody clouds, no real sunshine until later on. Actually, um, very windy. Birds were some of the birds were flying really quickly. Like this duck was probably doing sixty miles an hour. Cormorant's probably doing forty-five. So it was moving targets. Uh, a couple of shots they weren't moving that quickly, but still, it it gave me a real insight and actually how different the camera now works compared to um, how it was and you might have seen other photos uh, another video sorry that I've done uh, including a photo shoot with Imogen um, I actually noticed the 135G master and the 35mm Samyang was focusing better the the eye autofocus was definitely better it just seems more snappy um, and as you can see the snow in the background there falling uh, and this is where it actually misfocused, it actually starts focusing on the snow up here. So it did actually misfocus completely and then it just stayed under the reeds as I brought it down. So that was an issue, but I don't think that was down to anything else other than that it decided to pick up on the snow rather than a bird. Um, you know, so this, this cormorant here, I mean, unfortunately there wasn't much interest out and about because the weather was rubbish. As you can see the light there, it was terrible. It was, uh, you know, like I say, don't ignore any bad pixelation or anything like that it's due to us shooting in really crap light I mean we're talking really crap light um, all the other video bits are done on my phone so obviously that's just going to give you an ideal sort of exposure all the time so you can't really gauge on what it's like obviously I'm that bird flew straight over me I missed it completely there the seagull this one he's doing probably let's say 30 miles an hour at me roughly and it hit every time um, and that's coming at me um, and then there were some humans as well as it, he flew over them. But as you can see in, in her jacket there, you can see a little bit of snow falling. So we still had things to uh, deal with. It wasn't, like I say, perfect conditions. If it was a sunny day, I think I would have got everything in focus pretty much. Um, unless you get some kind of uh, something in the way, like a bush or, or the reeds or stuff like that. So, um, But guys, I just thought I would put this up. Nick's been very helpful. Really nice to meet him finally as well really nice day actually even though the weather was a bit with it was it was really helpful from him so thank you very much nick for being an ace on that one that was that was brilliant um as you can see there nice and sharp and that's cropped in uh, 50 percent a few shots there as he got a bit closer but like i say nothing's perfect you know it did really well i mean it's done what it should do end of the day you know we've used cameras for years and even old screwdrive cameras i was getting birds like bird shots like this so here's a couple of shots from uh, when we went down to Dungeness after being with the lens there messing around so a couple of shots there and I've got a couple of sneaky shots of Nick um, taking some photos as well so I hope this has helped everybody um, please check out the reinitialization uh, video and I'll put it on the end of this video here um, if you have the a7R4 and the 200 to 600 G lens and you are having issues try the reinitialization first I actually ended up doing it twice the first one didn't do anything second one it has so it may be just a case it needs a proper kick up the butt kind of thing. Um, but don't forget to click the subscribe button, little notification bell as well. And uh, thanks for watching and I shall see you soon.